certainly think I could do a lot better job in many facets because my exposure to society and the many different kinds of people and the diversity of the people that make up America right now to this time, I, I could represent them in a fine way because of my experiences and because I listen to them. But the thing is, is what is important to the general American people, those issues are not discussed with the people that are representing our nation in a corporate way. And um, I just don't trust because there are so many people that refuse to educate themselves on what the context and ideals of America are and how freedom and liberty could make life better. Uh, there's actually people that say, oh, you're giving, you would give criminals would have more rights. And it's ridiculous. And the facet of international affairs is way beyond the scope of 99.99% of, .99 of the people living in America and other countries. And, you know, the class that they call elite, these people are living on, on a level that is in an echelon that is way out of your reality and my reality. I mean, they're not affected by finances and costs. It's about relations and cooperation and having partners in other nations to make this work. I mean, a $100,000 car is no big deal, okay? A $10 million house is no big deal. Okay, um, it's just crazy. So you can't even fathom the responsibility and the stress and the security that these people have to go through. Uh, and you know what? They are lost when it comes to representing us and, and they don't care about us. So that's why police forces and code enforcement and insurance companies... And, and, you know, banking institutions and finance companies, a lot of times those people that, that are fraudulent and corrupt and tyrannical and try to have their way with us, they're so selfish. And, and they're like little tiny piss ants compared to the real people. And when people start mentioning like Pillar Community and Skull and Crossbones and Rockefellers and Masons, you know, the evolution of those people uh, and groups have become institutionalized to exist in so many different places, let's say countries or nations, um, that the meetings they have and the deals they talk about, they're important because a human species needs to evolve. And it has a lot to do with the condition of our earth and the timeline of, of, uh, of what happens when we get old. The same thing is happening to this planet. And the same thing is happening on levels of society. And that's why you get played with pandemics, with subjects of racism, with subjects of like gun control... Because you need to keep busy so you don't interfere and become a working part. And, and half of you, you just want to sit there and drink after work. And you don't care. You don't educate yourself. And, and that's fine. I don't want to condemn you. But for you to have a political opinion and even have the right to vote, you'll vote for somebody that's going to legalize weed but make you work a 20-hour day and raise your taxes 500% just because you don't focus on these things. You know, I've had a couple civics classes. Uh, I've sat in history classes during school. And, you know, probably as a test group of many different <laughs> forms. And I get it. I get it. Okay? You may not. And, and I'm, like I said... I'm only speaking to the 99.900%. There's that little percent of you that I don't want you to be offended because I'm not talking to you. And like, here's the brass tax. Judges and senators and governors, half of them, or a handful of them, 
may actually know the reality of the situation. Okay, uh, some attorneys might get it, uh, and you know they might end up, you know, taking a course or following a path and getting inducted on a level to degrees. You know, uh, dear God, is somebody going to help me now? You know, I'm talking about the Masonic crap. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm pissed off at the Masonics because I'm an artist and the way they... they, they yeah. Anyway, so and policemen don't know nothing about it. That's why they're on the street and they got their badge and they're bossing you around and trying because they're just part of the game. And, and so are you and I in a sense. And it's up to you to free yourself. But I wouldn't want the stress of these people. Okay, I wouldn't want to be in a predicament where... You know, you don't know. The next, cu the next cup of water you could drink, you know, could have poison in it. You know, if you're a politician. You know, let, like, let's say anybody could be president. I'm over 40 now. I'm 48. I have a right as an American to be president. Okay? And if these shorts had a pocket in them, it would have my American flag. But believe me, my American flag's close. That's my identity, by the way. Uh, so it's like... The security breaches that could happen, that could kill you off, are basically divisive for the ones that are already sitting. That's why people are holding office like 30, 40, 50, 60 years later. And, and that's why, you know, you hear seats are empty. It's because they're, they're, they're pro players. And, and on the street level, it's like a game of checkers. Almost. But on their level, it's like a game of chess. Okay? And I have this information and knowledge and perception because I was inducted by circumstance. A policeman beat me up. A state's attorney wrote some false charges. And a judge told me I wasn't in court. And it was unbelievable. Uh, I'm not going to thank them, people, because... You know, you really did, you, your, your personal attack on me was not necessary, but you brought me here. So it's like, for people that want to say that, okay, let's vote for this guy, let's vote for that guy, you know, like, like DeSantis and Trump and Biden and Obama and Bush, uh, they, they're tools. Clinton's a tool. Hillary, you wish you had it in you. Well, you had it in you, but you're not that. So it's like, it, it just wasn't happening. And, you know, we may see a woman represent us. And, uh, but I'm on my own personal journey. And, it, you know, and the fact that there's so many people that are against the reality of it. And they don't want to understand. They don't want to look. They don't want to change their own ways. They don't want to admit that, okay, yeah, when I was... 19, I had this and I got stopped and I couldn't go get this job and I lost my car. You know, they don't want to hear that that didn't happen or that they could have fought a little bit, you know, administratively and got that stuff back and, and corrected their path. It's really difficult and it's really hard to do. So it's like, it's a, it's a hard job. It's a lot of responsibility. Um... And even the best leader for the American people does, you know, it may not appeal to the leaders of other countries yet because the leaders of other countries, you heard the term third world. It's, it's actually an insult to say that in perspective. Uh, like, okay, let me correct myself politically. The leaders of other countries are in a circumstance where their societies, for the most part, may be less advanced or or more advanced to the degree that American society is, which I operate in as I reside here in my homeland. Um, but there's a sense of ego and emotional balance that is out of balance within those people. And that's why our leaders are who they are. Because if we don't have businessmen and we don't have these snakes and sharks as our leaders, we're going to get screwed up. You know, I mean, just look at look at the circumstance with, with Putin. Okay, now, this could very well, you know, like 9-11 and, and uh, all that, 
be a a a uh, collateral part of a, a a preliminary proactive setup, and that that's what they do, uh, because there's a futility that goes with it. You know, like Saddam, he didn't want to play ball, and because he sat with those people, like the guy, uh, you know, from Libya, like they sat with the right people, but their their general perception and attitude was barbaric. It was old school macho instead of, you know, with with a degree of compassion. And, you know, like the guy that's representing us now, it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I can get an idea on why, like, the past 10, 20 years have gone the way it has. Um, I really can, but... You know, just just wait and see, and, and keep your scruples, and try to affiliate and affirm yourself with a standing that you do matter, past uh, an entitlement of ignorance. Because being an American comes with a lot of grace, and it's a blessing. Okay, because we do get a run and start compared to other countries, but. It's more of a responsibility, and Kennedy said it. Don't ask what your country could do for you. Ask what you could do for your country, okay? And, and he was on the right track. And I do believe that to a degree, even though there was a lot of illicit or unmoral things going on in the house, you know, and, and he, he got killed, I, I believe that it just wasn't time for him yet. And just like, say... Putin, Saddam, or, or I, f I keep forgetting the guy from Libya because, you know, he, he looks a certain way. Uh, Gaddafi. Yeah, like, those people were jumping the gun, okay? And um, that's why, they, that's why they, you know, those two are gone and the other one is, is doing his thing. <laughs> putting himself on the spot, you know, hey, that's fine with me, you know, you're going to kill people, then, you know, there's a lot of innocent people dying, so that that's not right, so the whole context is so we still can grow, there will be sacrifice, there is going to be changes, there's going to be hard work, there's going to be gains that you won't see, there's going to be losses that you will feel. But don't think for one minute that you could fathom what it takes to lead a nation because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. And you know, the sad fact is, is that we are all flesh and blood and human to some level. I bled today for me. Okay, so there are, there are things that people do and there, there are hungers and passions that people have that are, are unethical. And that hurt people. And they're not right. And that's why we haven't found peace and harmony yet with all these other nations. But from my perspective, there is no border anymore. Because so many different walks of life have been coming to America with, the, with their dreams. And going back home and talking to their people back home via, you know, used to be letters. It used to be telephone. And now it's internet. It's instantaneous. And, you know, people can fly back and forth and send stuff. So it's like we're really coming together. And it's going to be a while probably. I don't know. It could be five years. It could be a decade. Like it depends on the amount of devastation and, and the amount and level of ignorance that's still existing, you know. Um, so just don't think that you can go to work every day after you get up and get in your financed or paid for thing and then watch some news and, and and get the idea and have a valid opinion because you don't know what you're talking about. And this is that 99.99%. Okay, so it's like you will vote and even though the voting machines have been corrupted, the people that put the machines there, the people that operate the machines, the people that count and reclaim the machines, the whole thing is corrupt because there's too much selfishness. 
And, and that's what the heads and our leaders are seeing. And that's what allows other heads and leaders of other nations to wage a war on their own people. And that's what is affecting us. Because when they pull back their resources and their agreements you know, and contracts, uh, worldly contracts and worldly resources and worldly agreements that affect us all, it, it's really their breach in the contract. And, and that's, that's an alternate reason for wars. It may have been the original reason. Uh, and there may have been wars started and, and waged and, and, you know, and, and going on that are devices, but it's all based on the lack of cooperation, okay? We are not cooperating with them because we are lazy, we procrastinate, and we are selfish, and they are the same people. So when we decide to take responsibility for ourselves, like everybody from police officers to us, you and me, they will get a message and they will be forced to reform themselves because, you know, it's like if you have a bunch of rats in your house, uh, you want to get rid of them, right? But if you had a bunch of rats that, say, knocked on the door or they came through a hole, they just ate your garbage and took your garbage out, ate a couple bugs a little way, clear some spider webs for you, you know, maybe picked up some debris on the floor and take them outside and make their own nest instead of just like sitting in your couch and screwing with you, you know, you would be like, ah, rats aren't so bad, you know, jump to a story. I heard about like in India and Prague, like people let ants go through their house. One lady that I know, she says that there was like like an eight inch or a foot wide line path of ants going up the wall. And it didn't bother nobody. You know, it's just like, that's what it is. That's harmony. And like, there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions, but how much time do you have on a, on the street instead of in the box? Your, you know, your mind in that tube. Uh, you're on. You may be watching me on YouTube, but I'm talking about the TV where the news comes out of. You know, it's like that. That's your reality. That is a reality created by you for you. It doesn't even affect those people. As an example, you know, George Bush and the Bush family, they could have a sweet ranch in Pakistan and all be over there right now, driving Corvettes. You know, you know, and playing golf, and and they wouldn't even see. Or feel the fact that they're in, in another country. And, and, you know, do you get that? You know, so that that's really the, the whole the whole circumstances here. Is it is a lot of responsibility. And it's it's so vast of a perception that you would actually have to just take a lot of time. You know, a lot of philosophers get it. A lot of other people that are educated and professional and professors and scientists, you know, and even some just simple layman style people walks of life like me, you know, we can get it, but you have to want to accept the level of anxiety and stress and disappointment that goes with the truth. Jack Nicholson said it in that movie. You always remember it. You can't handle the truth. So, you know, people like me are just going to sit back and, and, you know, hopefully one day you'll get it. Uh, and for future generations, they have a better chance than us, okay? Because it's to the point right now that if you don't accept it and embrace it, you're probably going to be falling victim at some, some sort of way in some amount of time. You know, it's like a natural disaster, like a hurricane, and everybody has to run to the store and get their plywood and then sit with their water and just wait. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you're going to get it or you're not going to get it, you know? And, and for a lot of people, even like myself, to deal with it right now and to, to, to try and, and confront it or even like, experience it, it's like walking outside into the eye of the storm. You know, as soon as you get out that door, it may not be the eye. <laughs> and you may get, you know, a little tornado might come as well. Cyclone a coming. And, and, you know, 
it's just so much to fathom. So, really, start educating yourself. You know, I had an old man, he's like, I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to vote for any of these people because none of their principles are good for me in my life at that, when it comes down to it. You know, I may like the character, I may like some of their suggestions and their plans and ideals, but it wasn't good enough for me to vote for, plus with the machines anyway, and every, you know, for past like 35 years, no voting has gone well. Everything has been a miscount since the Chads. I, I mean, that's when I remember. And I'm not that old, but I do remember. So it's like an old man was like, Yeah, if you want to know, you got to find out what coffee shop he's at and go wait outside and then introduce yourself. I'm like, dude, you're like 78 years old. And is that, that's your advice for me? If I, you know, you're going to tell me who I should vote for based on your ethics coming from a time where you took your women to the doctor for hysteria and you couldn't say the word pregnant. And then you're telling me I should go, dude, the security that these people have. That's why, like, you know, senators and judges, they don't even, where do they live? You don't know where they live. They don't live amongst us, believe me. They come out of this little cloud, this little bubble, this little snow globe of protection. And they come to work every day and they deal with your crap. And, you know, and then they go back to their, to their, their, they don't even see us. Now, they could, but a lot of people, that 99%, you haven't behaved. And you haven't proven, like, that, that you're worthwhile other than to accept being a number. And, and for a lot of people, like, in, in, in sharing the same perspectives of freedom, liberty, and justice with me, they're on an administrative level. And what kicks in is a sense of fear or victimhood. And then what kicks in for them is a sense of entitlement. So, you know, then they want to say, oh, well, I've been robbed, and I've been capitalized on without my knowledge, and somebody's making money off of me. You know, and I should have that. You know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to one-up your neighbor. <laughs> so there is no unity. You don't have unity in mind, okay? So my job here, okay, is as myself to be my own example so I could live. And if others could learn from me while I learn from them, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, positive information or useless negative information, you know, that that's why we're here right now. That's why we're still having this freedom is because there's still a chance that we could, we could make the world great. America is great. America will never not be great. Hey, have you ever heard of a place that's been labeled land of the free, home of the brave? Freedom, liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> I don't think so. So if you want, you know, leave if you don't like it. Okay? And I tell, like, people that are... Uh, uh, another thing is I'm not against cops. Okay? I'm against bad cops. I'm against cops that are selfish and tyrannical. Okay? I'm, you know... So it's like they should leave when they are corrupt, because if you're endorsing communism, if you're okay with communism, you know, and if you promote communism and you act with communism for your own benefit, you know, there are plenty of countries still that are operating like that, that you might find, you know, appeasing and satisfying to live with. So, you know, you know I'm okay. You can get out. Like, you know, like the whoopee. <laughs> Imagine Ted Danson was in there. <laughs> That's one you would have died. Wanted to, anyway. Anyway, yeah. So, like, no. You know, it's it's a big job, okay. And like, I I I imagine one day I would like to represent people in a way. Uh, and you know, I'm. It's not going to be political. I know that. You know, maybe somebody will turn the derivative into political. But, you know, I, I run on spirit. And spirit paves the road for me. 
And Spirit is the helping hand that carries me on the magic carpet ride that I'm on. So, you know, really think about where you're coming from, where you're going. And, but most, most importantly, think about where you are and how it got this way. And what you can do for your country. Because our forefathers set it up. So, you know, you can do certain things that you ain't doing already. And, and be blessed for that. Be blessed for that. Don't be a taker. Be a giver. Okay? That's why, like, Ronnie James Dio and Black Sabbath, you know, there's messages in there that are pretty good. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's to live by, you know, but, but basically, there's a lot of information in a lot of media um, that you can learn from. And, you know, sit through it and watch it a hundred times. One movie that I did watch, uh, you know, through the influence of somebody else, was uh, Fight Club. It's a great movie. Like, look at the FBI warning in the beginning, you know. And if you watch that movie like ten times, twenty times, you'll start to pick out, you know, stuff. And you'll be surprised where you learn stuff from, you know. But it's not where you learn it or why you learn it. It's what you remember and, and what you can do with it at, at a certain point. Because if you're just going to sit there and, and be a victim or you're going to sit there and have an opinion but do nothing to promote it or, or, or you know, utilize it to help others, you may be holding us back, you know? And, and for the people that are lobbying for things that are like a man to be, best example in the whole world, a man that wants to be accepted as a woman is running and competing in women's sports now. To me, that, sh that, that shows our real leaders how stupid, ignorant, selfish, dysfunctional, and lackluster we are in, in, in being accountable and taking responsibility for, for living in this country of America. You know, and yeah, the, the Olympic one was for New Zealand. Okay, and, and you know, and there's another example that comes to my mind is like, okay, courthouses and, you know, police stations and stuff, you know, you call after five, you don't get an answer. What does that mean? You think about that. And think about how 24 hours a day, six days a week, that paperwork that's sitting in there, that's not operating after closed hours and on weekends, is actually still, still vibrating and working against you. So, you know, America is great. Our forefathers set it up so excellent. And if you don't go to court, if you don't challenge a traffic ticket, it's the simplest thing to do. Okay, here, here you go. Because homeowners and people like that and people that own own even uh, transportation, you've accomplished something, okay? You have played a game, right, and worked to have credit within that game, this game, okay? And you are successful already, okay? But when code enforcement comes around or you're getting pulled over for a stupid ticket and you still got insurance, if you do not challenge it, you just, you basically, you drop the ball after that, okay? Think about that, because if you own a house, you know, there's different levels. Do you own the mineral rights? You need to find out about that, okay? And if code enforcement comes around and says you can't have an extra car in the yard, and you just, oh, i got to get rid of my muscle car. <laughs> <laughs> And see what your rights are and what their rights are. You have to look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. And realize a cop is a citizen on patrol. Now, as an American, you've been signed up already, one form or another, okay? Uh, I dismissed myself from that, but whatever. So, um, if you are a natural American, also have a right to 
salvation as a citizen, as the executor, when it's convenient for you. But most of you, you're devastated because someone is telling you that you're being charged and that you are the debtor. Okay, and that's what code enforcement does. It's very simple. Okay, and that's what a scheme, I'm kind of speaking from the scene because that's, I don't want to promote anything or anything like that. You know, like, if, the, if your job went out and the and you just barely made your insurance payment, but you don't have a license or registration for it, no renewal, okay? You need to challenge that and, and look up what that's about, okay? And if, if you can put your self pampering and comfort a, a, aside for a second and, and spend the time, you'll realize, wow, really? That's how a policeman or a code law enforcement officer could just officer could just come in and and boss me around and, and put me in my place and, and affect my life. You know, you could do that too. You just gotta learn about it. Okay? And don't be scared to look up information. Don't be scared to ask questions. Now, I'm not saying you can just go up in the street right away and say, all right, I'm going to go to citizen's arrest, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to paint my house, uh, you know, with a bunch of penises on it, and uh, you just got to deal with it. You know, and I'm going to, you know, shoot my guns off in my yard, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean... They don't trust us. We haven't our we haven't proven ourselves and people like me are attached to other people. That ninety nine point nine percent. Yeah, I messed up that high. Okay, so once you get your scruples right, you'll see that we do have a responsibility. And you'll see that what you're blessed with, okay? And you'll understand what diplomatic immunity is and, and how it could apply to you. And, and why judges and state attorneys and even cops can get away with certain things uh, and pay a small price only as an example so the people around us, and I'm talking to you, you know, don't get offended and, and get pissed off because of the double standard. You know, we have to get there. And to the 1%, you're right. It's not worth becoming you know, a judge or a state attorney because you're tied in too much. And it is a career. And, and it is a lifestyle. And, and you will have to dismiss the fun that you can have. Okay? So, yeah, think about it. I know the title of this is very narcissistic and egotistical, but, you know, I, I've accepted that part of me because I'm an artist. And that's who I am. I'm an American artist. <laughs> you know, so that's all I want to be. 